Hello, I'm Rob Hostetler, Vice President of Power Production for Hoosier Energy, and I want to welcome you to our Generation Facilities. Hoosier Energy's mission is to provide our Rural Electric Cooperative member distribution systems with assured, reliable, and competitively priced energy and services in a safe and environmentally acceptable manner. As employees, we take this mission quite seriously as we go about our day-to-day -day work. Hoosier Energy employees are committed to providing a safe and healthy work environment for every person that comes through our gate. As you prepare to enter our production facilities, I encourage you and require that each of you respect and follow our safety policies and procedures outlined in this detailed safety orientation. While you work and visit the site, if you happen to encounter or recognize any safety, health, or environmental hazards, report it immediately to your supervisor or to any Hoosier Energy employee. By immediately reporting unsafe acts or conditions, we not only protect ourselves and our coworkers, but our families and loved ones as well. Our Hoosier Energy Safety representatives are here to assist you and to ensure the safety of everyone on our sites. Please listen to what they say and follow their directions. Again, on behalf of every Hoosier Energy employee and the members we serve throughout Southern Indiana and Illinois, thank you and welcome to Hoosier Energy. The Hoosier Energy Power Network owns and operates two coal-fired generating facilities. The Frank E. Ratz plant, named after the first general manager of Hoosier Energy, is located in Petersburg, Indiana, on the White River. Our second facility is located in Sullivan County, near the Wabash River. Beginning operation in 1982, the 1000 megawatt Merrim Generating Station is situated next to the Turtle Creek Reservoir, built in 1980 specifically to provide cooling for the plant. Hoosier Energy is dedicated to providing reliable and competitively priced energy and services in a safe and environmentally friendly manner to our member distribution systems. Hoosier Energy conducts its operations with the utmost regard for the health and safety of everyone working at our facilities. Safety starts when you're traveling to our site and parking your vehicle. Indiana law requires that seatbelts be worn by each individual in a moving vehicle. All vehicles must be parked in a designated parking spot when not in use. Union Craft Trader to park in the east lot. All other personnel should use the west lot. If in doubt where to park, ask security. Some of our parking lots are a fair distance to the job site, and occasionally individuals seek rides to and from the parking lot. Hoosier Energy does not allow people to ride in the bed of pickup trucks. Some individuals will have drive-in privileges, so take note that vehicles illegally parked will be removed from the plant site. Failure to adhere to parking rules will result in revocation of drive-in privileges. You will also note that we have posted speed limits inside the facility. If no speed is posted, then please keep to a safe minimum. Always keep to the posted 20 miles per hour on the paved perimeter roads. It's important to note that large vehicles have the right of way on our roads. Smaller vehicles such as golf carts, skaters, and bobcats must be escorted in areas north of the railroad tracks. Hoosier Energy asks that all contractors and employees maintain their work areas in a clean, neat, and orderly condition. This includes running hoses and electrical cords overhead whenever possible, cleaning up spills immediately, keeping stairways, walkways, and exits free of obstructions, placing oil rags in approved metal containers, and not using compressed air for personal cleaning. It's against OSHA rules. There are certain minimum personal protective equipment or PPE requirements at our sites. Even when welding, hard hats must be worn at all times while not in an office environment. Hoosier Energy allows hard hats to be worn backward, but only if the ANSI approved reverse donning arrow is clearly marked on the hard hat suspension and the inside shock absorber is turned in the appropriate manner. We require everyone to wear safety glasses that include side shields. ANSI approved steel-toed shoes are required as well as natural fiber clothing which means no polyester or nylon. If you are working on live electrical equipment, proper clothing including arc flash PPE should be worn as necessary. Consult Hoosier Energy Management personnel before performing any live electrical work. Throughout much of the site, hearing protection is required. You are required to wear proper hearing protection in all process buildings, regardless of plant conditions. Signs will be posted on the exterior of the plant indicating the expectation of hearing PPE. In an emergency situation or hazardous situation that is not an immediate threat to life or property and not covered in these safety rules, you shall act according to your best judgment in order to safeguard life and property. 
Any unusual action shall be reported to the boiler house control room. When a person observes a hazardous condition that may cause injury, they must report it promptly to the boiler house control room. There are numerous ways to report emergencies to the control room. Each of the page phones in the plant is marked indicating the location. These phones at Merrim have a dial on the box, which enables you to switch lines. If one is busy, switch to the next line. Simply pick up the phone, press the handset button, and say, Boiler House Control Room Line 1, Boiler House Control Room Line 1. Let go of the handset button, and someone should come on the line to speak with you immediately. Once the control room operator answers the page, please identify yourself and tell the operator your location and emergency. The control room operator will dispatch the emergency response team to the emergency location. Another method is to use the plant phone. All phones should be marked with our emergency number, or you can always dial zero and ask to speak to the boiler house control room. Occasionally, we will issue plant radios to contractors. Use channel one and say, Control room, but control room, I have an emergency in C warehouse. Someone should reply to you immediately, and help should be on the way. Small fire, and I'm gonna need some help out here with it. If there is a health emergency, Hoosier Energy will dispatch certified first responders to the scene. Our first responders and EMTs are held to standards set by the state of Indiana. Lifeline has provisions set to land on site if the responders feel it is needed. Emergency responders are certified in fire, hazmat, and confined space rescue. Members are held to the same standards as area fire departments and included agencies. Examples of reportable emergencies include medical, fire, hazardous material leaks and spills, weather, and confined space emergencies. Hoosier Energy uses the plant siren to warn others of dangerous situations. A siren tone is the sound for a fire. A high-low tone is the sound for inclement weather. An earthquake is a yelping tone. A warble is our hazmat warning. A gated siren is our medical emergency siren. And a pulse tone is a terrorist threat. Signs in common areas also include which sounds are associated with which warnings. When you hear these sounds, report to a muster location. Each site has different muster locations and your supervisor or foreman is expected to identify exact locations for their employees. As a general rule, all emergency muster areas are in the parking lots outside the buildings. If you hear the inclement weather siren, please seek appropriate shelter. Many of these locations are marked with emergency shelter signs. Any condition that could reasonably result in death or serious physical injury must be avoided at all costs. This includes exposure to falls, working under suspended loads and not using the clearance permit or confined space procedures properly. Failure to follow these rules will result in your removal from the plant site. If imminent danger exists, work should be halted immediately and the hazard corrected before work continues. Hoosier Energy asks that all near-miss events be reported to your supervisor or foreman who will relay this information to their Hoosier Energy contact. All cords and plug-connected equipment, including extension cords and power tools, must be connected via a ground fault circuit interrupter. Hoosier Energy cannot and does not guarantee power circuits to be ground fault protected. This means GFIs are required to be plugged into the power source before any equipment can be used. Contractors are not allowed in restricted areas without authorization from a Hoosier Energy representative. Hoosier Energy operations personnel will operate all electrical breakers and valves. Hoosier Energy requires that all ladders meet OSHA requirements for workloads and ladder construction. Contractors are responsible for safe, clean, and properly working ladders. Ladders should be placed on a level surface and tied or held by another worker. The base of an extension ladder should be away from the wall, one-fourth of the ladder's total height. When climbing a ladder, both hands should be free. Hand lines are required if material is needed. No metal ladders are permitted on site. 100% fall protection is required when work on ladders takes place outside the ladder rails and above four feet off the ladder base. Also, while accessing the plant roofs, it is important that if an individual comes within six feet of the edge, 100% tie-off is required. When using aerial lifts and scissor lifts, make sure that you are tied off when in the basket. All anchor points need to be approved for at least 5,000 pounds. When there's not an approved anchor point or there is an exposed edge, one of the following options must be utilized. Use of a manual hijacker with cage. 
Use of an electric powered hijacker with cage. Build scaffolding with handrails. Install barrier protection. When using scaffolding, it must be built and dismantled under the supervision of an OSHA-defined competent person. Access ladders must be installed to extend three feet above the handrail. Access gates are required at each working platform and are the only way you may access the scaffolding. Fusion Energy mandates that a three-tag system be used on all scaffolding. A red tag is required when scaffolding is being built or dismantled. A yellow tag is used to indicate guardrails cannot be installed or that there is incomplete planking. A green tag is used when handrails and foot planks are installed. Finally, all scaffolding must be inspected daily before access is granted. If you are using a forklift, OSHA regulations and instructions for operations must be followed at all times. This includes wearing seat belts, conducting a documented inspection of the forklift before each use during the shift, and an inspection of any slings and lifting devices being used. If you're using a mobile crane, all OSHA regulations for operating the crane must be followed. Critical lift plans must be developed by qualified personnel and submitted for review to Hoosier Energy. Only trained personnel can operate mobile cranes and all parties involved in a critical lift must be briefed during a meeting prior to operation. All rigging equipment requires a damage inspection before each use. Taglines should be used unless they create a safety hazard. Most soil at Hoosier Energy facilities is considered Type C or previously disturbed. Before any digging or excavating is done, an excavations and trenching work permit must be completed. The site must be marked with flashing warning lights or orange barricade fencing at the end of each day or when work is not being performed for an extended time. Remember, OSHA requires that if you're excavating four feet or deeper, the space may be considered a confined space. Appropriate protection from cavens will be required. These methods may be sloping, shoring, or using a trench box. Unguarded openings should have physical barricades at all times. Warning tape is not acceptable as a physical barricade. Contractors shall provide adequate barricades to protect exposed wall openings, floor openings, trenches, pits, and anything else that would be considered a fall hazard. Barricades and covers must be clearly visible. All barricades must be tagged with the following information. A list of hazards the name of the company controlling the area, and the name and phone number of the contact for the company controlling the area. Contractors planning on bringing OSHA-defined hazardous chemicals on site must coordinate this action with the Hoosier Energy Contractor Coordinator and complete a chemical procurement process, which will include a review by environmental and safety personnel prior to bringing the chemical onto the plant site. An MSDS for each chemical is required to be delivered to the control room for record retention. All hazardous chemicals must be labeled with HMIS information along with the name of the contractor controlling the chemical. Any chemical brought onto any Hoosier Energy site by the contractor shall be taken with the contractor when they leave the site. There are a few known hazards that we should discuss before you enter the power plant. Inorganic arsenic is present at all coal-fired power plants. Arsenic, due to the combustion of coal, can be found inside the boiler and ductwork. OSHA requires contractors to comply with certain requirements concerning inorganic arsenic. Certain structures and equipment may contain lead-based surface coatings or paint. Prior to disturbing any coating at our sites, please contact Hoosier Energy for approval. Your supervisor or foreman will know whom to contact to expedite approval as necessary. All abatement shall be done by a third-party contractor. Hoosier Energy uses minor quantities of radioactive material in certain measurement equipment. Each of these devices is labeled. Don't remove anything or disturb these areas unless authorized to do so by Hoosier Energy. The Merrim station has anhydrous ammonia on site to assist in lowering nitrous oxide emissions. At certain times, rats may or may not have anhydrous ammonia on site, but the IPNL Petersburg plant just upriver from the rats plant uses NH3 in the same way it is used at Merrim. Anhydrous ammonia is a colorless or sometimes white vapor. It is extremely pungent and has a penetrating odor. The methods of exposure are inhalation and skin contact. Merrim follows PSM, or Process Safety Management Requirements, and all contractors working on any ammonia system shall be familiar with and trained with the PSM standard. If you smell ammonia, please evacuate the area and contact the boiler house control room. The RAT station has numerous identified and labeled areas where asbestos is used for insulating purposes. Contractors must refrain from disturbing this material at all times. If your job requires you to work in or on an area that has or potentially contains asbestos, 
you are to notify your foreman immediately. All areas must be abated to minimize the potential for exposure. Caution should be used when working around any lines that are marked with an asbestos warning. Do not use these marked areas as tie-off or structural rigging points. All abatement shall be done by a third-party contractor. Merrim and Rats have hydrogen systems on site to cool the electric generators. When working in and around the hydrogen systems, contractors must use intrinsically safe equipment, such as non-sparking tools and flashlights. Using hydrogen lines for grounding welders is not permitted. Hoosier Energy has specific cutting, burning, and welding procedures when working in hydrogen areas. If you believe you may be in proximity to the hydrogen system, please don't hesitate to discuss this with your supervisor or foreman. A confined space is defined by OSHA as a space that is large enough and so configured that a contractor or employee can bodily enter and perform assigned work, has limited or restricted means of entry or exit, and is not designed for continuous occupancy. There are two types of confined spaces, Permit Required Confined Spaces, or PRCS, or Non-Permit Required Confined Space. At Hoosier Energy, we require every confined space to have a permit prior to entry by anyone. These permits posted at the entry point provide a checklist to ensure that all hazards are eliminated or properly guarded against before entry. All entrants into this space must sign in when entering and sign out when exiting. The control room closed vessel log must also be signed. An important part of the permit deals with establishing a rescue method in the event of a problem in the confined space. Members of our emergency response teams will also be on site to discuss rescue methods prior to entry. All hot work including cutting, burning, and welding requires a permit prior to the start of work. The one exception is work done in designated welding booths. Permits can be obtained from the control room. The Hoosier Energy Contract Coordinator can assist supervisors and foremen in obtaining permits. Work near the hydrogen system and coal system require additional permitting. If the permit requires a fire watch, then the fire watcher shall be trained and dedicated to fire watch. All flammable and combustible material must be properly guarded or removed within a 35-foot radius. Fire watchers shall remain at the worksite for 30 minutes following completion of the hot work. Contractors must conduct air monitoring for ozone prior to entering the boiler, ductwork, fans, or any part of the gas pack with electrostatic precipitators in operation. Monitoring must continue while work is being performed in those areas. Contractors must provide their own monitoring equipment. Merriman and Rats clearance permit systems do not utilize locks. OSHA allows power production facilities to use hole tags in place of locks. Hoosier Energy expects and demands that everyone treat hold tags in the same manner a lock would be treated. The clearance permit system was developed and implemented to ensure safety and provide for the control of hazardous energy sources, such as electrical, mechanical, pneumatic, hydraulic, radiation, chemical, and thermal hazards. This procedure shall be used to ensure that the machine or equipment is stopped, isolated from all potentially hazardous energy sources, and tagged out before employees or contractors perform any servicing or maintenance. Clearance tags reference a hard copy permit that is kept in the control room. Red tag permits are used when equipment must be isolated and energy free for repair or servicing by one or more work groups. A red tag permit shall be used when more than one work group works on equipment concurrently. For contractors working at Hoosier Energy, the foreman or designated lead person shall walk down each applicable clearance to verify accuracy and sign on to the Hoosier Energy clearance prior to commencing work on normally energized equipment. A contractor subclearance will then be issued to the foreman or designated lead person. Each affected worker will need to sign on the contractor subclearance prior to starting work and will sign off the contractor subclearance when the work is finished. Tags may only be removed from equipment after all authorized permit holders are signed off or an alteration has been approved. Stripe tag permits are to be used by only one work group when testing or servicing of equipment requires the temporary re-energization of the machine or equipment. If a second work group needs to work on the equipment, the stripe tag permit needs to be either transferred to the second group or released and a red tag permit issued. Individual isolation tags are affixed to energy isolating devices using red plastic cable ties. Isolated devices with attached tags and cables shall never be operated, defeated, or otherwise bypassed. Equipment bearing only a red plastic cable tie shall be treated the same as equipment bearing a tag and cable tie. Red plastic cable ties will only be used for the permit clearance system. No other uses of red cable ties are acceptable at our facilities.
The health and safety standards discussed in this video were formulated to assist you and protect you in your work. A general understanding and strict observance of our safety procedures is critical when working on site. Rigid enforcement by supervisors and foremen can do much to prevent accidents. In order to accomplish a goal of zero accidents, Hoosier Energy expects each person entering our facility to cooperate in all safety efforts that apply to their work.